If you have been looking for a way to make extra money on the side, eBay is the perfect side hustle. I personally made over $100,000 selling on eBay and it's actually not as hard as a lot of people think. I love talking about eBay and reselling and teaching others to do the same. So if you're interested, keep watching because this is going to be kind of a quick start guide to getting started on eBay. Hi, my name is Eileen. Welcome to Hustle and Slow, where I talk all about reselling, making money from home and building multiple streams of income. I'm actually a self-employed entrepreneur and reselling is one of my side hustles but I do make my money over a bunch of different um, income streams. So I've been personally selling on eBay since 2004 off and on. Um, I've done full-time, I've done part-time, I've gone through periods where I haven't been selling at all, but I have been selling on eBay for almost 20 years at this point, which makes me sound really old, but I do know a lot about selling on eBay. I'm currently selling very part-time and I'm really focused on spending as little time as possible and selling items for as much as possible. Um, I'm trying to have maybe one or 200 items that I can sell and my goal is to make about $1,000 a month in profit, working maybe 10 hours a month. But the tips that I give you will help you whether you're trying to do part-time, full-time, whatever you're doing. This is just basic information to get you started. So the first thing you wanna do is kind of figure out what kind of seller you want to be. Um, do you wanna be full-time, part-time? Is this just something you wanna do on the side so that maybe you can um, save up or cover extra expenses that are popping up. Inflation is killing us all. So it's understandable that a lot of people need to make a little bit of extra money right now. And I always say that having multiple streams of income is a good idea because if one income stream goes down, you have the others to um, make up for it. So kind of consider if you want to be full-time, part-time, and then what kind of items you want to sell. I personally am the type of person that will go to yard sales and thrift stores and occasionally buy liquidation to sell kind of one-off items. There are some people that want to do drop shipping, and I don't know much about that. So if that's what you're looking for, um, this video might not be for you. But if you're looking into maybe thrifting or going to yard sales and reselling items at a higher price on eBay, then this is the video for you because that's kind of my specialty. So how much money can you even make on eBay? I get this question a lot, and some people don't think that you can make a good income on eBay, and they're totally wrong. Literally, the sky is the limit on eBay. It just depends on your business model, how much time you have, how much capital you have to invest. I've made anywhere from $100 a month to $8,000 a month on eBay at my at the top of my sales when I was full time. So it just depends on what you're able to find in your area, how much time you can put into it and all that kind of information. So um, you can definitely make a good income. I think it's totally possible and I teach people all the time in my course how to make about one or $2,000 a month part-time on eBay. I think that's totally possible. I've also shared many income reports or reseller sales reports here on YouTube if you wanna go check those out after you watch this video. Even though this is going to be kind of a quick start guide that you can quickly watch, see if it's for you and get started on eBay. If you do need a little more guidance, I do have a course called the Reseller Roadmap, which is more of a detailed step-by-step -step course that will teach you to start, streamline, and scale a reselling business. So I will leave a link to that down below with a coupon if you're interested in that. Otherwise, keep watching and I will go over all the basics so that you have all the information that you need to get started. The next thing is you really want to understand the fees. Um, just to give you an idea of the fees, they have, there's fees for listing on eBay and you will get 200 free listings on eBay um, at the time of this video. Um, and then there's final value fees, which is the fee that you pay once an item sells. So there are a lot of different fees on eBay. They can be kind of confusing, but I personally just think of it as about 15% of the price of the item. I will link below to the full document um, on eBay's website so you can read through them if you want, but I personally just think about 15% um, on each item. So if you sell an item for $100, about $15 is gonna go to eBay. So you can just kind of do the math in your head when you're outsourcing and you wanna figure out if you can make a profit on something. All right, before I give you the steps to starting selling on eBay, make sure you sign up down below for the eBay beginners cheat sheet. It's gonna be everything I go over in this video kind of in a cheat sheet form so you can kind of print that out or save it on your computer and have that to reference um, as you start selling on eBay. It also includes all the supplies that I recommend and all that kind of stuff. It's just a really quick guide. So if you watch this video, then you can reference that when you're actually starting to sell. That way you don't have to come back to this video and rewind and try to remember what I said about certain things. It'll all just be in there, kind of in like a bullet pointed checklist. So the link to that is down below and it is free. You just have to provide your email and I will email it to you. All right, step one is obviously to sign up for an account. If you already have an eBay account and you've already been using it to buy things and you have feedback, then you are a step ahead. If not, you need to sign up for an eBay account. It honestly doesn't matter if you choose personal or business. I get this question a lot. Go with whichever one you want. Um, as far as I know, the business one just gives you the ability to put a business name in your address. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've tried to do a lot of research to see what the big difference is. And then there's really not that big of a difference. So just pick whatever you want. 
you know how to sign up for accounts, so just go ahead and sign up for eBay. Choose a username that sounds relatively professional, but don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out the perfect username. It doesn't really matter. So just go ahead and sign up and you are done with step one. And if you do have an account and you want to sign up for a new account for selling, I highly recommend using the account that you've already used if you have feedback because step two is getting feedback. This is really important. Some sellers say you need to have like 100 feedback and I honestly don't think that's true and I think that's unrealistic and it's going to take you way too much time unless you have a ton of money to spend buying things. Um, I say get maybe five or ten feedback. As long as your feedback is good, a lot of people aren't going to worry about it, especially if you're not selling like really expensive stuff. It's not that big of a deal if you only have like five or ten feedback. That will build up over time. But if you don't have any feedback, if you have a brand new account with zero feedback, I do recommend getting some feedback. One of the ways to do this is to buy cheap items from big sellers. So you want to look for really cheap items. You can buy supplies for your new reselling business. I like to buy poly mailers on there. You can buy a shipping scale. Um, you can buy thank you stickers. Anything that's cheap that you actually need so you're not just wasting money. I'll link down below to cheap items that you can buy to kind of boost your feedback. You're looking for sellers with like 10,000, 20,000 and up feedback because a lot of times they will set it so that once you purchase an item and pay for it, you automatically get feedback. So that's a good way to kind of build things up. All right, so step three is finding the items that you want to sell on eBay. I always recommend with starting stuff starting with stuff around your house so that you can kind of do the research, see what's selling, see what's not selling and just kind of start to um, develop your knowledge and get used to researching items because you can't just throw any old thing on eBay and sell it, unfortunately, that would be really nice, wouldn't it? So just kind of gather things around your house that you might be looking to get rid of. You can do a closet purge, shoes, toys, it doesn't really matter. Just start looking stuff up on eBay. And the way to do this is like, for example, if you have an old PS3, I don't know what number they're on right now because I don't play video games, but let's say you have an old PS3 you don't want it anymore, we're going to type it into eBay, we're going to scroll down and hit sold, and we're going to see what they're selling for. You can do this on your computer or you can do this on your phone, and you can see what they're selling for. You can also, instead of clicking sold, you can click completed, and you can see um, the sold and unsold listings that have ended. So you can kind of see, is every single one selling, or are most of them not selling? What prices are they selling for? And this kind of just gives you an idea of where to, or how to get started with pricing and if an item is worth selling. So if you're seeing there's like a hundred completed listings and only like three of them have sold and they're only selling for like $20, then I don't know if it's worth it for you to sell. It may or may not be. If you're getting an item for free from your house, it might be worth listing an item that is going to sell for a lower price or might take longer to sell just because um, you're just kind of starting your business and um, you didn't pay for these items. But when you get to the point where you're buying inventory to sell on eBay, you want to get a lot more picky about how much you are going to sell items for and how much you're paying for items and what they're really selling for and how many of them are selling. So it's just a lot of stuff to think about that um, you will get used to over time. Now I can just sit at the back of the thrift store with the items that I'm interested in, go through, pick items that I know are going to sell for more than $30. That's usually my goal um, and that have a good sell through rate. And then I can put back items that either are not going to sell for enough or they're just going to sit for a long time. So really, you just want to find some stuff, do the research, see if it's going to sell, and then decide if you want to sell it or not. If you don't have stuff around the house, you can try yard sales and thrift stores. Those are my two favorite places to buy items to resell. In addition, I've done lots of what sold videos that kind of go over the items that have sold and how much they've sold for. So you can kind of check those out. I'll link to one of these here. Finish watching this video first. Um, I'll li also link to them down below so that you can check those out and see what kind of items you should be looking for if you're out sourcing for items to sell on eBay. All right, now that you've gathered your items, you've done research, you have maybe like five or 10 items that you wanna list on eBay, the next step is to take good photos. This is key here. Um, people want to see the item that they're buying and they wanna see it clearly. So um, this is one of the biggest things because people are gonna be scrolling through, they're not really gonna be looking at titles, they're gonna search and then they're gonna look at pictures. So make sure your item is well lit and um, accurately represented, take lots of pictures. Um, I usually like to set up near a window or I personally use a ring light um, like the one I'm using for filming right now. I will link to the ring light I use down below. It works really well for most items. Um, whatever lighting you can use, if you don't have money to spend on a light, just go near a window. Just figure out a way to take pictures of items so that it's accurate and they're bright. If you need to edit them afterwards, um, there are a lot of editing apps. I use Photo Room to remove background. Sometimes that can work and look really nice, but I prefer to just take the picture right the first time and do very minimal editing because I don't want to add that much time onto my um, listing. So you're going to want to take good photos, the front, the back, the tags, the sides, any flaws, just as many photos as you can so that the buyer is confident in buying that item and, and, 
and they're confident in what condition it's in so they don't feel like maybe you're hiding something. So next you're going to want to fill out the listing page on eBay. So you're going to want to go to sell an item and you're going to start filling everything in. It's pretty self-explanatory. It does look like a lot. Um, and it can be a little overwhelming at the beginning, but you're going to start with a title. You're going to want to use keywords, brand names, things that people are searching for. Don't use things like cute shirt. No one's searching for cute shirt. They might be looking for green floral sweatshirt or I don't know what flowers these are. Daisies. Um, daisy sweatshirt. Probably not that specific, but you know what I mean. Use um, descriptive words. Put in sizes, um, put in the brand name all that kind of stuff that will help people find your item. When you're listing, make sure you fill out as many fields as possible. They do have a lot of like specifics they'd like you to um, fill out. I just do the required ones. I kind of skip over all the other ones because it just takes too much time and most people aren't looking at those anyway. So I obviously do the size, color, style, and the ones that eBay requires you to do. And then you wanna do a quick description. I usually just do the size, the condition, and the measurements. If it's a piece of clothing, I will note any flaws and that is it. I don't think that people really read descriptions. They just wanna see what they need to see in order to make the purchasing decision. They don't wanna read along elaborate description. Then you're going to put in the price and you want to decide on price based on the research that you did. Um, if you're just getting started and you want to move things quickly, you might want to be on the lower end of competitive. I highly recommend doing um, fixed price over auctions. Most things are not going to sell for higher than the starting price unless you have something that's really sought after and rare and people are going to bid it up. I recommend just doing buy it now or fixed price at a competitive price. Um, and going from there. All right, so next you need to fill out shipping and this is the thing that freaks people out the most and don't let it freak you out. Get a shipping scale, get a cheap one. Usually you can find one for under $20. I will link to the one down below in the description or you will get a link to one if you sign up for the cheat sheet that's down in the description. And make sure you know the weight of the item. Make sure you know the weight of the item when it's packed up. So if you're going to be using a box or a poly mailer, whatever you're going to be using to ship the item, make sure you know the total weight and enter that and use calculated shipping. That way you're not guessing on shipping, you're not saying it's five dollars to ship and then ending up paying fifteen dollars. So using calculated shipping is just like a foolproof way to ensure that you're not going to lose any money. Next you're always going to hit preview so that you can review the title, the pictures, and make sure everything looks okay and then you're going to set it as live. Step six is increasing your selling limits. If you are a newer seller you will likely have selling limits I think it starts out around 10 items. I'm not 100% sure. It just depends on your account. Mine are very high because I've been listing for a long time. I could never hit those limits. So when you're a new seller, you won't be able to list a lot of stuff. What you want to do is list the items that you know will sell quicker or that you think will sell quicker and maybe list them for a little bit less so that you can start getting those sales and eBay can start trusting you. And then every single month, make sure you request a selling limit increase. And it'll only take you a couple of months to get a decent selling limit. So make sure you do that every month. You can either do it on their website or you can give them a call and just make sure you try and max them out every month if you can until it gets to a good amount. So those are the six steps to just really get started selling on eBay. Next, I'm just gonna give you some basic information like what happens when an item sells. When an item sells, obviously you're going to have to ship it. So get it all packed up and use eBay's shipping label. I cannot recommend this enough. Don't take it to the post office and pay their more expensive rate and then come back and type in that long tracking number. If you have access to a printer, it is so easy to just ship or to print the label, even just on a piece of paper, fold it in half and tape it on. You can get labels. I will link to those down below too if you have a regular printer or a label printer. Either way, I highly recommend just using eBay's labels. They're going to be a lot cheaper than you're going to find in the post office. And why do you want to go wait in line at the post office anyway? Um, it, eBay makes it really easy. You can see your orders and you can just click print label and you will put in the um, weight and the measurements if you didn't already do that in the listing and then you can go ahead and ship. I just want to pop in right here and ask you to subscribe if you are liking this video so far, if you're finding it helpful and make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out as a YouTuber because it tells YouTube that you like the video so they will bump it up and show it to more people. Let's keep going. So how do you get paid on eBay? eBay worked with PayPal for a really long time but in the last couple years they moved over to eBay, eBay managed payments so you can no longer get paid with um, PayPal on eBay. So what you do is you provide your bank information and then eBay will collect the money and it will sit there and you can decide how often you want payouts. I personally just get payouts weekly so that I'm not getting, I don't need a deposit every single day that I need to categorize on my bookkeeping. So I just get weekly payments based on whatever I sold over the last week and they just get direct deposited into your account. I highly recommend getting your own separate bank account for 
eBay. You can have all your money from your sales going into it and you can also use it to purchase items for resale. That way all of your transactions are all in one bank account. You can go to the bank and open a business account but I personally have used personal accounts in the past. As long as everything is separated you're pretty much good to go. So next I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions and give you some of my favorite tips for beginners selling on eBay. All right my first tip is to just start listing. A lot of people get really hung up on like listing the perfect item and getting the pictures perfect. Just start going. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to be a little confused at first. It's okay. Just start listing and that is the best way to start learning. So grab a couple items, get them listed today, tomorrow, whenever you have time, sit down and get it done. And the more you list and the more you ship, the easier it will get and the less overwhelming it will feel. So that's like my biggest um, tip because a lot of people hold themselves back because they're scared or they want to get everything perfect. Don't be a perfectionist, just start. My next tip is to make sure that you're making a profit on items that you're buying. If you're starting out with things around the house and it's not that big of a deal, um, unless it's something that you spent a lot of money on and you don't want to sell it for very little, obviously. But when you're out buying items to sell on eBay, make sure you're making a profit. Make sure that after fees, after the cost of the item, after shipping, after any packaging supplies, you are making money. I personally try to sell things for, I personally prefer to spend $5 or less on items and sell them for $30 or more. I know that that provides me a decent profit um, and I don't want to have a lot of items in inventory. A lot of people are okay with selling items for $20 that they got for like $2 or $3 and that's still an okay profit if you're just doing this part time um, and you can't find higher value items. So it just depends on you, but make sure you're making a profit. I can't tell you how many people sign up for Reseller Roadmap and they do the five minute business assessment and they find out that they're making less than a minimum wage because they're just not doing all the numbers. Just make sure you're making a profit and you're not listing a bunch of stuff that you're only gonna make like one or two dollars profit on because your time is worth money. Just like with listing, shipping gets easier the more you do it. That is the biggest thing that holds people back because they are afraid they're going to mess up with shipping, that it's gonna cost too much money, or they're gonna make some sort of mistake. I understand that it is complicated because there are so many different options to ship when it's when it comes to especially USPS, FedEx, UPS. But I personally recommend if it's under a pound, do USPS first class. If it's over a pound, do USPS priority. Like I said, if you have a shipping scale and you weigh the item with the packaging and you enter that information and do calculated shipping, there's really no way to mess up. So don't be scared about the shipping. It's not that big of a deal. And after you ship, like I want to say two or three items, you will get a lot more confident. So don't let shipping hold you up. When it comes to shipping, you can get free priority mail packaging from USPS. It has to be used with priority mail. Please don't abuse this because they will take it away from us, I'm sure. So um, you can get flat rate envelopes. My One of my favorites is the padded flat rate envelope. It's like at the time of this video, it's like $9 to ship. So if I have like a pair of shoes, um, and I weigh them a lot of times across the country from where I am on the West Coast, it's going to cost me like 12 to $15 to ship depending on the weight. If I can get them in this envelope, it costs me less than nine. So it can really save you a lot of money. I will link down below to the USPS website where you can get all the free shipping supplies. Um, maybe don't go crazy. Maybe order a couple of each one to see what you use the most. I personally recommend the Tyvek envelopes. Those I use for anything that's like over a pound that I'm not going to use in a flat rate. The flat rate, I also recommend the padded flat rate envelopes. And some of the flat rate boxes are really good too. So maybe get a variety depending on what you're selling and see which ones you use more and then you can order more. Another thing you need to do is make sure that you're honest about condition. Don't try to hide flaws, be really clear about flaws. If there is a flaw on something, take a picture, add it to the description and let them know that there is a picture in the listing. So that way you are covered if they try to make a return later and say they never saw this flaw, you were clear about the flaw. So I try not to get anything that has flaws, but if you do, make sure you are very clear about it. You just wanna make sure that your customer understands what they're getting when they get it. When you're taking photos, use square mode. If you're using your phone, I just use my phone and I use square mode. That's because that's how they're going to upload on eBay. So just use square mode from the beginning. That way you're not having to crop everything. Please don't use stock photos. I honestly will use them maybe once or twice a year if there's something that I just really can't get a good picture of but use your own photos. You can get in trouble for using stock photos because they're somebody else's property and it's just not worth it. And I personally will scroll by stock photos for the most part. If I'm looking for something and I see a stock photo, I will usually go to the person that has a regular photo, like a real photo of the actual item versus stock photos. So I really recommend you don't need to search for stock photos. I think it's kind of a bad practice. I know a lot of people do it, but I personally don't recommend it. Another thing you want to do for a successful business as a beginner is to ship quickly. Make sure your handling time is correct when you're listing items because if you ship late, you can get a defect in eBay, which can really impact your account. So if you're saying a three-day handling time, really make sure you get the item out in three days. 
people are just so used to quick shipping thanks to Amazon. So um, just dropping things off at the post office every other day is a really good practice and will keep your customers happy. And lastly, once you get the hang of it, I am all for multiple streams of income and not relying on any one source of income. So I list on eBay and Poshmark. I also used to do Mercari and Facebook Marketplace, but I dropped those because they just weren't making as much money as eBay and Poshmark. So that's where my focus is. I highly recommend cross-posting your items. I use a reseller tool called Bendu where I keep track of my inventory, I cross-post items, and then I can also use it to remove items when they sell. So if it sells on eBay, I will mark it as sold in there, it will give me the profit that I made on that item, and then it will also automatically take it down for a Poshmark, for example. So once you're used to reselling and you feel comfortable, then I highly recommend cross-posting. You will be able to increase your sales this way because you're getting it on two different platforms in front of two different audiences. Right now, eBay is about half my sales and Poshmark is about half my sales. It fluctuates back and forth, but without one or the other, I would only be making it half the sales I am making. So um, you can really increase your sales by cross-posting to other platforms. I will leave you my link to Vendu down below so you can get 30% off your first month. They do have a free plan for up to five items if you're like a complete beginner. Um, so you can try it out for free, but I think it's totally worth it. And the plans are actually pretty affordable. All right, that's it. So hopefully this motivated you to get started selling on eBay so you can start making extra money every month. Hopefully it was a helpful video that gave you all the information that you feel like you need to get started. Um, again, if you are interested, check out the reseller roadmap and the coupon code down below so that you can have help if you need that extra help. And make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos from me about reselling, making money from home, and building multiple streams of income. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.